that stress primarily comes from not taking action over something that you can have some control over. So if I find that some particular thing is causing me to have stress, that's a warning flag for me. What it means is there's something that I haven't completely identified perhaps in my conscious mind that is bothering me and I haven't yet taken any action. I find as soon as I identify it and make the first phone call or send off the first email message or whatever it is that we're gonna do to start to address that situation, even if it's not solved, the mere fact that we're addressing it dramatically reduces any stress that might come from it. So stress comes from ignoring things that you shouldn't be ignoring, um, I think in large part. So uh, stress doesn't come, people get stress wrong all the time in my opinion, Stress doesn't come from hard work, for example. You know, you can be working incredibly hard and loving it. And likewise, you can be out of work and incredibly stressed over that. So, and likewise, if you kind of use the, you know, use that as an analogy for what I was just talking about, if you're out of work, but you're going through, you know, a disciplined uh, approach of, you know, a series of job interviews and so on and working to remedy that situation, you're going to be a lot less stressed than if you're just worrying about it and doing nothing. My job, one of my jobs as the leader of Amazon is to encourage people to be bold. And people love to focus on things that aren't yet working. And that's good, it's human nature. That kind of divine discontent can be very helpful. But uh, you really, you know, it's incredibly hard to get people to take bold bets. And you need to encourage that. And if you're gonna take bold bets, they're gonna be experiments. And if they're experiments, you don't know ahead of time whether they're gonna work. Uh, experiments uh, are by their very nature uh, prone to failure but big successes a few big successes compensate for dozens and dozens of things that didn't work you, you need to identify your big ideas and there should only be two or three of them and then if a senior leader the, the main job of a senior leader is to identify two or three important ideas and then to enforce great execution against those big ideas. And the good news is that the big ideas are usually incredibly easy to identify. You shouldn't need to think about them very much. You already know what they are. Let me give you an example. For Amazon, the consumer business, the three big ideas are low prices, fast delivery, and vast selection. You don't need you know, it's not the kind, you know, in the, way, the, the way you know that they're the big ideas is because they're so obvious. The big ideas should be obvious. And by the way, it's very hard to maintain a firm grasp of the obvious at all times. So little things can distract you from the obvious. But you have to back up and say, these are the three big ideas. How do we always deliver things a little faster? How do we always reduce our cost structure so that we can have prices that are a little lower? And the good thing about these big ideas is they will be stable in time. So I know for a fact that 10 years from now, customers are still gonna like low prices. No matter what happens with technology and everything else, no matter what happens, people are gonna like faster delivery. It is impossible for me to imagine a scenario where 10 years from now, a customer comes to me and says, Jeff, I love Amazon. I just wish you delivered a little more slowly. This is so inconceivable that you, have, you can have great conviction as a leader to continue to put energy into driving speed of delivery. And whatever you're, you know, in AWS, I know that customers, they like low prices, they like availability, they don't want the services to be down, they like data security. It's not very hard to figure out what the big ideas are, and then you can keep putting energy into those things. You spin up those flywheels, and they'll still be paying you dividends 10 years from now. And what I'm saying, I'm putting it in kind of a business context, but for those of you who are, are in government, these principles would apply identically, identically to a government organization. You should figure out what the big ideas are and just spin up flywheels. Get those things rolling. Make sure that you've picked things that will still be true 10 years from now, 20 years from now.